This is the plaintiff, Harry. He says he bought a $37,000 Corvette from the defendant, who promised him two keys, and he's been getting a runaround on the second key ever since. He bought the car in good faith on the defendant's promise. It's now costing him $589.51 to get a new key, and he thinks the defendant should pay for it. So he's suing him for it. This is the defendant, Luis. He says he gave the plaintiff a great price on his 2014 vet and never promised there would be two keys. This guy's harassing him. Contact him 15, 20 times in a row for months. And he's scared the guy's gonna kill him over a key. Bottom line, a second key is not his responsibility. And the plaintiff just needs to get over it and move on. He's accused of making false promises. The defendant has bought a countersuit for $6,400 for emotional distress. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff bought a Corvette from the defendant, but the plaintiff says the deal was he would get two keys to the Corvette and only got one, so he is suing for the cost of the second key. It's the case of someone key my Corvette. Thank you, Douglas. All right, Mr. Harry, you're suing Mr. Lewis for $589.51 that it's going to cost you for a replacement key for the uh, 2014 Chevrolet Corvette you bought from him. You are counterclaiming against him $6,400 in emotional distress. And before another word is uttered, I need to know how you calculated the emotional distress to be exactly $6,400. I mean, I, I added up... Uh, a few uh, deals that I missed out on, days okay. of court, gas money. All right, let me hear from Mr. Harry first. Go ahead, Mr. Harry. Talk to me. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, end of 2021, my son's car got totaled, so I ended up giving my vehicle to him. And I told my son, uh, look around and see if you could come across to a weekend car for myself. Uh, January 13, he came to me and he said that I found a 2014 Corvette and it looks pretty nice. And uh, I said, okay. Uh, so we saw the car, I drove the car. We had a few issues. Uh, we negotiated the price for $37,000. I asked him if the vehicle has second key. He said, yes. And I asked him, why are you selling the car? He said, apparently he got the car from his family member because he was buying a house and he needed the money and he was giving, a, giving away the car for very cheap. So he bought it so he could make money on it. I said, okay. That's fine. And I asked for the key, second key. He says, yes, I have the key. I said, for sure. He said, yes. Okay. I gave him $200 cash deposit on a car. We shake hands. And I said, I'll come and get the car tomorrow with the cashier check. He agreed. Second day, I went there with $36,800 cashier check. And his wife even registered the car right on the spot. And uh, at that point, he handed over to me the single key. I said, what about the second key? He said that uh, he hasn't got the second key from his cousin yet, but for sure they have it. And he didn't have the chance to see the cousin to get the key, but I'll get it to you. I said, okay, that was part of the deal. How did I he know that sure for sure they had it? That I don't know, Judge. You have to ask him. Okay. And we're sitting in an office and wife was doing the registration. I said, uh, I want to make sure I'm going to get the key. He said, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. And the wife even said in the office that either you can come and pick up from the office or I can go ahead and FedEx it to you. I said, that's fine. So I give him like a couple of days and I text, should have texted him and saying, hey, uh, you got the key? No respond. And then again, hey, what happened? You got the key? No respond. I call to the office, the wife pick up, I go, what happened? Your, you know, your husband is ghosting on me and he's not answering on my text. Uh, she said, oh, uh, he got the key last night. Uh, I'll go ahead and FedEx it to you tomorrow. I said, okay, thank you for that. Two days, I give them like a couple of days, nothing. I'm calling the wife, she's not answering. And then I'm texting him, nothing. So finally, like after back and forth, like days passed, he texted to me, I don't have the key, and uh, stop harassing, which is, it wasn't harassed. I was just asking that, you know, give me what you promised me. And that was about it. I said, if, and then he said, and I said uh, in a text, if you don't have the key, then you have to pay for the key because that was part of the deal. 
uh, and no response. And I said, OK, if you're not going to do that, then I'll take you to the court. That was it. And here we are. All right, Mr. Lewis, yes. uh, you tell me yes. your side. Yes. So apparently I sold this guy the car. He came. He looked at the car. By I the way, is great... there a bill of sale for the sale of the car? No. Is that accurate or no? Uh, no, there was never a bill of sale. OK, so go on. Yeah, so like he said, he came back the next day, he came with the cashier's check, and he asked me, is there a second key? Is the check in his hand at the time, or does, has he already given it to you? He given it to me already. When did he give you the That's cashier's the check? He gave me the cashier's check as soon as we left the bank. Okay, and what happens? And then he asked me, is there a second key? And I told him, yeah, if there's a second key, I'll be glad to give it to you. Now, I got it from you, my family. Now, had he asked about a second key before that? No. Okay. And I told them, if there is a second key, I will gladly give it to you. I, if I find it, I will give it to you. If not, well, the deal is a deal. And then after that, that's when the phone cards start coming in, the text Wait, messages. I'm sorry, hold on. Why would you say the words a deal is a deal? Yeah, like a deal is a deal. Like the did that car really got happen? sold. Did that conversation come up or did it look more like this? Hey, is there a second key? Yeah, let me see if I can find it. You know, that's that's how it would normally come up. Not and if not, comma, a deal is a deal. I don't think that's how people talk, really, because you don't expect them to sue you over this. You think he's no, just asking you not. for a key. I, I, so the I phrase a deal is a deal cars. probably was never said, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure I said a deal was a deal. Like, I mean, if there's no second key, a deal is a deal. Like, it's it's done. Like, okay. there's no other key. But so what happens? Did you not find the key? I went crazy looking for the key. He would call me repeatedly. I told him, hey, bro, if I find the key, I'll gladly give you the key. Like... If, if there is no key, just get over it, like move on. And he kept calling me, calling me, harassing me, calling my business, calling my wife. Where were and, you going to get the key from? Uh, my cousin. I had bought the car off Did you a, ever a, a ask your cousin loop. if he had the key? Yeah, he didn't have it. Okay. So d uh, did your cousin say he had given it to you? No, he never gave me a, a, a second key at all when I, but I bought the car But did he say he did? No, he never told me. He said he would look for it. Okay. Um, and... Uh, God, when you bought it from him, you didn't want a second key? I, I didn't see it a big deal because I buy cars from auctions all the time and I never get a second key, so. <laughs> all right, so uh, he, according to him, he called one day and your wife said to him he got the key last night. I mean, whatever conversations he had with her, that's her. That deal yeah, wasn't but she, with me. She says you got the key the prior night. Had you? No. Is your wife there? No. Are you, did you get the key and you're not giving it to him because he's a pest? <laughs> no, I, I'm not that kind of person. If I had the key, I would give it to him. Um, Mr. Harry. Yes, Your Honor. Whether you mentioned it before or after giving him the check is a pretty good indication of whether it's a condition of the contract, but it's not the be all and end all. Let's say that you did mention it beforehand. You'd still have to prove that it was a condition of the contract. In other words, he only has an obligation to pay for a second key if he breached an obligation to give you two keys, which means that it has to be a condition of the contract, as in, I'm not buying your Corvette unless there's a second key. If that's the case, wouldn't I find that on a bill of sale or on a piece of, uh, the nearest piece of toilet paper and crayon that you use to write it down to say, this is really important, this is a condition of the contract, we didn't write it on a piece of paper, but my son was with me so he can testify. That, okay, I'm uh, happy to hear from your son. Go ahead and put sure. your son on. Sure. What's your name? Hi, Your Honor. Uh, Andy. Okay, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so what conversations did you hear about the key? Uh, about the key, I heard my dad on the first day when he was inspecting the car before buying it. He multiple times asked him, oh, do you have the key, second key? Why would uh, he ask him multiple times? If he asked him once and he got an answer, why would he repeat himself? Well, he got an answer and then he asked, oh, well, is it with you? And then he said, oh, it's with my cousin. And then my dad made sure saying, okay, for sure, can you get it? So, uh... You know, by the time we pick up the car, hopefully tomorrow, can you pick it up tonight? So I, when I pick up the car, I have both keys. And he said, oh, I'll try. And uh, well, Even your dad doesn't next, say all this, but go ahead. But the next day when we go to pick up the car, he says, oh, I didn't have a chance. I was working, like my dad said. 
And then uh, after that, the conversations were between uh, my dad and him. But he mentioned multiple times that, yes, I have the key and yes, it was with my cousin. So there was a second key, but we never received it. Right. So the, if the, so, if the cousin can't find the key, you want to get back the Corvette? Is who's driving the Corvette? You or your father? Uh, mainly my father. Okay. Let me talk to your father again. How's the Corvette driving? It's driving fine. We have okay. Do you want to want to undo the deal and return the Corvette? Uh, no, Your Honor. I didn't think I you put would. a lot of money into yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I think I didn't think you would. Welcome back to the People's Court. It seems somebody's lying about the keys to this Corvette, or key, if you will. Let's go back into the courtroom and find out who wins. I appreciate your son being a good son and all mm. that, but Thank you. I have to go, you know, by the letter of the law and understand what the contract was between you. And just because your son says, my dad asked about the key a lot, that, that's what I was referring to beforehand. You can ask about the key a lot, beforehand. It's not be all and end all. Oh, had you already handed the check over before the first time you mentioned the key? I don't care if you mentioned the key a hundred times beforehand. The important thing is, is the sale contingent on it? Contingent, like it's not going to happen unless there's a second key. And that is very unusual, right? Because you don't want to return the Corvette. So, um, so that unusual thing I need to have proof of, such as in a bill of sale, it says that if there is no, you know, that, that you promise there's a second key, and if you don't provide a second key, you're going to pay for a second key. Because that's the remedy you're asking for. You don't want to return the Corvette. You don't want to undo the deal. You just want him to pay for a second key. And I'm going to have to see something that proves he has that legal obligation, because normally he doesn't. And you asking about the key a lot beforehand which is what you and your son say, that does not mean that he has to pay for the key if he can't find it, okay? I would can have I to something? find it to be, yes, you can. But you understand what uh, I'm saying, right? Sure. You want a I very do. specific remedy. Hand me 600 bucks. And if all you guys do is talk about the key beforehand, yeah, my cousin has the key. Okay, you're going to have the second key? Okay, great, second key. That still has to be a condition of the deal, a condition sure. of the deal. And I know it's not because you don't want to give back the Corvette. But go ahead. What were you going to say? Uh, the paperwork that I submitted to the court, I don't know if you had the chance to see it or not, on a text conversation that uh, I even said that that was part of the deal. Yeah, that's you, you saying me. it after everything's and hit the fan and he, you're calling a thousand times he, over there because you want the key. That is not proof beforehand that it was actually a condition of the sale. That's you saying what you're saying in court. After everything hits the fan, now I want to add something to a contract I didn't write and didn't have, which is you got to pay $589.51. No. On your, stop. On your counterclaim against him, $6,400, why? I am suing for emotional distress. Why? Because the repeated calls, I was scared to go to work thinking this guy was going to kill me over a key. He would start sending <laughs> text messages, aggressive text messages. How, how like, many I don't times know where... did he call about the key? He called at least 100 times. <laughs> okay. That's a lie. Um, well, you do have an... Who's that affidavit from that you submitted into evidence? Who's that from? Your that, wife? That, that's, that's my wife. He okay. would blow up the business. He'll blow up her phone. Okay. And... Um, how many times did he text you about the key? Um, honestly, I, I lost count. He, he texted me repeatedly times. I told him over the phone, you know what? If I can't find the key, I'm sorry. Like, just move on. There is no second key. You know what I mean? Like, I told you I would look for the key. I never promised you the key. Okay. I don't find Somebody. based on, on your... But, okay, but other than it being uh, him being annoying, um, how does that translate to $6,400 for you? There was days of, of, of work that I wouldn't even want to go to work, fearing that well, this guy was going to Well, then I think you need come. to put your big boy pants on and go to work, even though he's calling a lot. I mean, I, I don't know what this guy's mindset he, is. Really? Did he ever threaten to kill you over a key? I mean, it sounded like he was going <laughs> to. <laughs> on your counterclaim zero, on his claim against you for the reasons I've gone into already, I don't find that there is any specific agreement on his part to provide the second key as part of the contract as opposed to as just something he'd do. And therefore, I don't find that he has to pay $589.51. Verdict for the defendant on the claim. Why is the second key so blooming important to you? 
Because if you lose the key, so you could have a spare key, otherwise you're going to be stuck, and it's an expensive key. It's almost $600. You can get a key, though, by going to Chevrolet, I presume, and getting another key. Would that be right? Yeah, but it's going to cost nearly $600. Yeah, I guess if you want it, you're going to have to buy it and go, and go to guess. General Motors, you know. I guess. Okay. I'm sorry, but uh, hey, were you worried about having to pay him, you know, thousands of dollars for emotional distress for what you caused him? Not at all. I didn't cause him any not emotional at all. distress. No, not at all. Uh, I didn't <laughs> you, call him thousands. You scared him. I call it. Uh, no, I did not. I'm not a scary person. I was just asking him whatever I was promised to, and he didn't give it to me. He's a big, fat liar. That's all he is. All right. Well, that's his story, you know. Mr. Luis, let me ask you, uh, how do you feel about the case now? You don't have to pay him for that key. The issue's Uh, over. You happy? I I feel like if he's he's worried about paying $600 for a key, he should go buy a Honda. (laughs) All right. Well, listen, your cousin didn't have the key. That's real bottom line, right? Yep. No key. Sorry. None. Okay. All right. Well, we'll bring this case to a close, and uh, I hope you get over your emotional distress. Okay? Time will heal. <laughs> I'll you, try. Hopefully. I'll try. All right. <laughs> All right. Good enough. All right. Harvey? Okay, Doug. Look, this is a contract case, breach of contract. Did, the, uh, did anybody promise two keys uh, to the buyer of this Corvette? When you have a contract case like this, you can't get emotional distress. I mean, I hate to say it, but I think people have gotten way too sensitive in this society and everything seems to hurt them extremely, but the law doesn't treat it as such. In a contract case, no such thing as pain and suffering or emotional distress. What is your golf handicap, John? And what is your favorite course that you have played? Maryland, do you play? Oh, that this could, could be, be a hell no. <laughs> <laughs> this could be really humiliating, though. Uh, I have to expose myself. Yeah, and expose Reveal my handicap. I should just spew out some vanity handicap number. Oh, I'm What's the real old. handicap? The real handicap. Uh, I'm a 12 at, at my golf course. That's, and what does that mean, handicap? That, well, that, that's a good way to keep track of uh, when you play against other players, whether you should be getting strokes or giving strokes. Um, so for Meaning example, that you even out the game between, yeah, you even uh, so, if you're playing against right. a really good player with a lower handicap, exactly. you even it out by giving right. you a few extra strokes. Exactly. So you play golf with a couple of judges and lawyers who are friends right. of yours that you've been right. playing with, this little foursome of yours yeah. um, that's been going on for years. And, and they're, all, they're all better than me in, at, at the game, honestly. So, uh, they're so all a little bit lower handicaps. They give you strokes. I get some shots, yes. Okay. I'm out. The other team I play against, also one of the guys was a national punt passing kick champion for the United States. And how does that help you pay golf better? It just tells you he's a tremendous athlete. He's got, <laughs> he's got tremendous uh, coordination, let's just say. But uh, my favorite courses, I would say, I love mountain golf courses. So you know, I would go to the North Carolina ones that I play once in a while, like Beach Mountain or Linville Ridge, Elk River, which isn't as mountainous. And then um, in, in New Jersey, near where my brother lives, there's some great public courses that are spectacular. Um, a black bear, Bally Owen, uh, wild turkey, I think it's called. They're, they're just all wonderful. And what about you? When am I going to get you on the golf course? So you don't want me on the golf course? What are you pretending to America that you have asked uh, me to go to the I, golf course? I have. And I, what, what do I ask you to do? Drive the cart. You haven't even asked me to drive the car. You won't even trust me to do that. I sit there and watch you oh, and well, hear you yeah. talk. That's true. I actually <laughs> ride in the cart. Let me ride rephrase Ride in the that. cart. It's a nice Not night. Not drive it. You know, I don't want to give up the wheel. But, yeah, I do like when you ride along with me sometimes.